Do you think Paul is dead at the end of this episode? Constellation episode six? Boom. Make sure to click the bell icon for notifications. <sighs> Hello and welcome to Road Goes Ever On and On. Today, Sterling and I are talking about the sixth episode of the exciting Apple TV show Constellation. So spoilers ahead. And if you're enjoying our content, just hit that like and subscribe button and turn on that bell for notifications so you can stay up to date with us as we continue our journey through Constellation. And with that, Sterling, this episode was pr pretty good. Pretty good. We've got it a lot was. of we got a lot of answers of like what was happening in the other universe while Joe has been going on her adventures. And I felt like there's more of... So you, you brought up something very interesting in the last one, mm -hmm. which was, like, the the real world. There's... We're seeing more of those kind of connections with the real world and really connecting to a lot of, like, conspiracy theories that people have and kind of coming up with a way that those potentially might happen. And so what connections did you see in, in this one, of real world connections? So the, the name of the, uh, of the episode is Paul is Dead, which was a conspiracy theory that Paul McCartney had died in, I think, 1966 and was replaced with a lookalike. So I thought that was, and, and that was like the, the phrase for it was Paul is Dead. Paul is Dead. Oh, okay. Okay. So I thought that was interesting and it kind of mimics some of what we're seeing of like people who seem out of sorts all of a sudden in the world you know like they they were one way and then all of a sudden it's it's like they're a different person you know so new conspiracy like a slightly theory, different person paul mccartney went to space and we have universe b's paul mccartney in our world and the other paul mccartney is in universe the other universe it, and it, it could even just be like, it, it could explain these ideas that people sometimes talk about. About and it, it also connects to you know something else that that you've mentioned that keeps coming up, which is like the changelings, which right. they replace. It's generally children, mm -hmm. but they replace you know somebody with like kind of like a weird lookalike, and right. I think. Joe even pointed out the, the the painting and said that's a changeling. Yes, uh, Alice so, did. Alice did. Alice, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yep, Alice yep. did. So, it's it's kind of interesting how it is connecting conspiracies and then you know using the logic of the show to to give a, a an explanation for them. Well, even just like the conspiracy of you know us never going to the moon. And right. it does kind of echo a little bit in this show of like, you know, things that happen with Bud, like Bud feels like that he's being questioned about going to the moon, even though he knows he went to the moon and like the conspiracy of like how those astronauts died in this universe versus how they lived in the other universe, like all these things that, that feel like conspiracies. And, and Paul even asks, I forget her name, the girl from NASA, who's like the frederick for paul is it mckella i think mckella maybe but he asks her he's like is this a cover-up like what's going on like this feels wrong and i i don't even know if there is necessarily a cover-up from an organization it does seem that it's just like there's this thing that nobody really can explain and that they're just like you know what lithium takes care of people that are having these psychosis uh breakdowns and right. it, it just it seems like nobody knows what's going on but i also think there might be cover-ups alice when she's in the the closet watching a video on youtube it's of uh, a real world accident the the Baikonur accident where she said 100 people died i think we we estimate it as at least 45 but it could be bigger than that and it was covered up for i think like 20 years by the the russian government you know this wow. huge accident with so many people dying that they were keeping kind of like heavily suppressing 
Uh, yeah, it was from 1960 to 1989 is when they officially acknowledged that it happened. Wow. So that, like, and that's, I think, one of the things with, like, conspiracy theories that, that people talk about are, like, the fact that there's, like, cover-ups to them. And th- who knows, like, maybe, maybe this explains that it's not always cover-ups, it's more of, like, confusion, you know, because of these odd events that are happening, you know, when there's liminal space involved or whatever. But it's just kind of interesting seeing all of these real-world connections. And then going back to episode one, you can even see that when Henry is rerunning the, the, the Cal experiments to get, like, the data, he's doing that at Baikonur. So it's... And going back to that episode one, he gets a call from... Now I've already forgotten the, the name of the observatory, uh, Skagorat, where the siblings are. So it's like they are they've been brought into the show earlier than we think. Like, there's a lot more connections going on. Mm-hmm. And it, it does it does kind of make it seem like this is something that uh, potentially benefits from rewatching. Although maybe, like, once you've seen the entire series... It is going to be very hard to have a positive, satisfactory ending overall. Because, like, you know, right in this episode, we, we see what Paul, the Paul from the other universe working on the cowl is in this universe and seeing him going through a universe that's not his. You know, Frida's name is Erica. Uh, you know, we saw the red car. And so we're seeing Paul in this new universe. And right right now, it doesn't seem like there can really be a happy ending for anyone. You know, like... Paul or Joe are stuck in the wrong universe and the other's children have lost a parent figure. So like, even if we do go back to like, say Joe goes back to her universe, Paul goes back to his universe, you know, somebody is losing a, uh, somebody else is losing a parent. And I think one thing this show really kind of struggle was going to struggle with is having a very like, satisfactory ending where everything feels good at the end. I I wonder if it answers the questions but doesn't necessarily give us a a happy happy ending. That way it it like we finally understand all the things that are missing in the picture, but it doesn't completely wrap up as as happy and so it kind of mirrors our real world where it's like there's this weird stuff going on and it just doesn't make sense and now we understand it but it like it it has unfortunate consequences right yeah you know and then people just have to like live with those right so do we think okay just jumping into you know some questions here uh, picking your brain seeing what you think do you think that the Joe that we have been following will get back to her Alice? I I don't know if they're going to be able to switch back. That's because that that would kind of give us the the, the happy ending. Well, but see, I don't I, even know if that would be the happy ending because now that Alice also seems pretty traumatized for the loss of her mother. And so, like, even if she went back, then we still have, you know, the Alice from that has a a rough relationship with Joe, like had her mom back and now she gets her mom ripped away. So, like, I, I just I can't even see like either option being like a happy ending. Like if Joe goes back, then, you know, that Alice is went through the trauma of losing her mom. And then the other Alice, like now loses her mom so i i feel like this show is gonna have a really hard time to have a light-hearted ending or a satisfactory ending i i think okay so i i think that it can give us a a, a satisfying ending i don't know if it's necessarily going to be lighthearted or happy and i i don't necessarily think that that the alice in the I think of which which universe 
that Alice is uh, Blue Universe Alice, who's like the blue car. Okay, yep. Yeah. Her mom is dead. Yeah. And she has this replacement. And it mm-hmm. is weird for her. Like, her mom wasn't super there for her, so she was more connected to her dad anyways. And then this mom comes in, and at first she's a little clingy, you know, compared to, like, what she's used to. But there are things that are just off about her. So I don't think it would be, at this point, awful for this Alice to realize my mom is dead. Plus, she's actually seen her mom's funeral. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Now, that, obviously, she probably didn't want to talk about it because, like, that would make people think she's crazy. But I, I think that she she's already aware of this stuff. And if she finally gets solid answers instead of just feeling like this isn't my mom, realize that, you know, like, finally being told, like, this is not your mom. Mm-hmm. But it is the current, it's, it's the state of affairs going forward now. That, gotcha. I think that could be better than having these feelings and having these visions and not being able to articulate it to anybody because it would make you look crazy, you know? So instead, she's just, like, bottled that up as a, as an 11-year-old, you know? Right. Right. Now, uh, last week you were talking about maybe Alice is experiencing this because of her liminal age. Yes, is my theory. My only, I I still want to go, I still think it is the the viewing of the cow theory, and my only thought is because of Wendy. We don't see Wendy, whose dad went through the same thing. She's not experiencing these, you know, multiple versions of her. There's none of that overlap. So it does make me believe that it is the Alice viewing the cow. She did, she did, Wendy did have a nightmare that day, and what if, right, didn't Wendy, you know, before the accident, didn't, like, when she was going into class, didn't she say something about, like, having a nightmare? she did say she had a nightmare. Okay, I, I, yep, I could be wrong then on that one. So, I, so I think, but maybe we just haven't spent a ton of time with that character to see that she's also kind of experiencing this. I don't know. That's... That's just kind of a, a, a thought. What I thought was interesting about this episode was it definitely felt like we've gotten a new perspective. And in getting that new perspective, it's so much easier to understand some of the things that we've seen. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think a lot of what happened on the ship with Joe when she was alone has pretty well been explained by saying by seeing Paul go through it on the other side. Some, some things there is, there is one spot when she was in the ice, the ISS where Uh she like blacked out for a long period of time, which seemed like it was later on, but it did seem like in this episode that they switched right in like the beginning. And before when I was first watching it, I thought she, they had maybe switched in that big, like, chunk of time that joe lost i my thought is that it's not necessarily switching as much it is as it is potentially like liminal space and so both states can happen at the same time you know like in in paul's reality joe is dead but he sees her breathing because he's in this liminal space and so uh Joe Joe is both dead and able to breathe. You know? So it's like both both realities are kind of happening at the same time. Yeah. And therefore able to interact with each other, you know? And that's why like uh that's why Joe is able to hear this Paul from this other world say you got to stop breathing, which I thought that was really clever. You know, because at first it totally seemed like Paul was giving her a clue of like, you're not going to have enough oxygen. You Mm got to stop breathing. Yeah. But instead seeing the new perspective of it, of like Joe's corpse keeps breathing, like he keeps seeing her breathe, 
And so now, like, the reality of it is Paul's like, you're freaking me out. you got to stop breathing. You know, like, it was a yeah, a cool kind of, like, perspective flip. I, I did like the the how we saw basically everything that we had questions in the first, like, four episodes, four or five episodes of, like, Joe going through these things and not understanding them and then seeing Paul go through those things and, and having the, like, other side of the coin version of, of what's going on. Like, you know, Joe sees his hand flo- floating and she, like, sh- yeah. touches it. And then she sees Paul, but Paul, you know, also saw her alive. And, you know, I I thought it was, overall, it was a cool episode, but nothing, like, really new. Like, other than seeing Paul's perspective on on going through everything, nothing really new has been presented. I, but, uh, nothing new, but I do think that we kind of, like, got answered. Like, some of the things... Once again, like the recording of, of Paul and like the hands touching yeah. funeral, a lot of those things were kind of answered. And it was interesting, the other perspective, because I feel like when we watched Joe go through it, it's a little bit, it feels like a little bit in like the horror genre. Not like I won't be able to sleep at night, but like creepy, unsettling. more like thriller or yeah. Uh, yeah, like unsettling, confusing, you know, it's like. I think it was tough to feel for Joe because things were weird and we didn't understand it. But now seeing Paul go through basically the same situation and having a better grasp of it and feeling like, okay, maybe we understand the rules or at least maybe one rule, you know, kind of. I feel like we were able to appreciate what Paul is going through. And I feel like with Joe, it was like weird, creepy, confusing and with Paul, it's legitimately sad to me. Yeah. You know? Like, he's looking at this world and just, like, so frustrated that it doesn't make sense. Like, his relationship with his family doesn't make sense. His relationship with the other astronauts doesn't make sense. Like, this project he was working on, that like, I, I feel like I can actually feel for all of his frustrations. And I, I totally, so to me, that is a very sad arc, whereas mm. Joe's was like, what the, what the heck's going on? And yeah. also, it's kind of creepy. Joe, you know, so it was, it, yeah, Joe, she definitely, like, she came back, her car is a different color, and her daughter seems a little different, where Paul, like, he remembers his job, like, he was doing, like, a physical job on the ISS, before the accident happened and like he had trained with henry who is now like a washed up bum and so like the, the hit, paul has such drastic differences in his life that you know he's able to put those pieces together a lot quicker than joe where joe kind of is like things don't seem right i think i'm just a little crazy a little cuckoo but like paul's like no like i know i know i'm in the wrong place yeah, I, I think potentially Paul might just be more vocal about it, you know? Maybe that's more, like, more in his character of, like, Joe seems like she's, like, grappling with it internally, and Paul seems like he's trying to force other people to remember his reality. He's like, D- don't you remember this? Like, we, you know? Yeah. Paul carries a lot of guilt with him. You know, he blames himself for destroying the ISS, he blames himself for leaving Joe up there. Like this, right. this version of Paul has so much guilt. Where like Joe, she brings Paul back. She believes the yeah. the cosmonaut broke the ISS. So like that Joe yeah. doesn't have a lot of guilt that she's carrying with her. Where this poor Paul is, he's like torn apart by what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I I see that, and I and I get that. And Joe is looking to the others to, like, back up that she's not crazy and what she saw is what she saw. Versus, like, Paul is looking for for backup to alleviate his guilt. Like, more than it's like, I I know that this happened, I'm not crazy. It's more like, you, you guys did tell me to leave her up there. 
And Mikel is like, yeah, I mean, technically, but it was based off the information you gave. So, like, yeah, we didn't, whatever you said, we, we just accepted it as fact. And, and, and that was what the decision was based. So it's like, they're not, they're not having his back. And so then that makes him feel like, so it was my call to leave her up there. And the reason I left her up there was because I was scared of her. Right. She's breathing That's, and not breathing at the same time. Like. Yes. He, I left my, my, like my comrade up there. Yeah. And he even con- in space. confesses it to Erica or Frida. I can't remember her yeah. name. He's just like, yeah, yeah. like I chose to leave her there. Cause I was the coward. Like I was not brave enough to, to bring her home and, and I could make the argument like I would give Paul a pass because, you know, she did have a pretty big open wound on her head. And I mean, I feel like he could have maybe wrapped something other than that cloth or wrapped that cloth tighter to make sure that it wouldn't be a problem on reentry. But right. yeah, he, this this Paul carries a lot of guilt. Yeah, it you know, that this feels kind of like uh a show version of a Chris Nolan movie, you know, yes. where halfway through we get new information and all of a sudden, a lot of the things we saw previously are like clicking into place and we're making sense. Mm-hmm. You know, th- this feels like watching Memento where it's like when, when you're first kind of going through it, it's just like, things don't make a ton of sense and then you get an important piece of information and all of a sudden it's like oh that's not weird it does make sense yes yeah um i don't i I don't necessarily want to say that this is like as masterful as one of those but it is just like it definitely is very reminiscent of that where it's like bunch of confusing scenes and then at some point important information and it's like oh and then everything and so falls I'm, into place and makes sense. Right. So I'm I'm kind of wondering, like we have two episodes left. Do we do we continue to see more of like the other half of the puzzle? You know, like more scenes kind of like Paul's scene where watching it is like, oh yeah, now now that makes sense. That was first weird when I watched it. And or, and I think I'm leaning towards like the latter, is do you think that it still has tricks up its sleeve and that it looks like it's just like it's given us the the, the main trick and now it's going to play it out. And like, you know, in watching scenes from like another world that all of a sudden all of our questions are going to make sense. Like, I kind of feel like it still has tricks up its sleeve. I, you know, it, I feel like it depends. If they are planning to do a second season of Constellation, I think, yes, they could do more tricks up their sleeves. However, if if Constellation is ending in, in two episodes, I think it would be hard to introduce new tricks to be satisfying you know i I, i'm trying to think like are we gonna see more paul especially after how the episode ended like right did paul get shot did bud get shot you know we see bud pull out the gun flash cuts away and i could see that you know we cut to it paul fought him bud was the one that actually gets shot so so i i think this potentially gets into like lingering questions and theories because i i i do i do think that the show potentially has tricks up its sleeve and i Mm -hmm. think that one of those is right now it mostly seems like there's two worlds Mm -hmm. kind of like henry's first description of like there's a world where the particles black there's a world where the particles white and then you know at some point of liminal space there's a world where both realities uh, are, are the case. I wonder if it's not just like a liminal space thing, but if there's actually more than just two states. You know, in, in the case of like matter, oftentimes generally doesn't just have two states. Like there's a bunch of 
a bunch of different states that are, mm-hmm. are possible. And like each one has like a different percentage of, of likelihood. Because to me, it feels like there's at least two buds. I feel like there is a, a, a bud who is has been dealt a, a crap hand by like he was successful he did all the right things he was going to save his mission when something bad happened and then all of a sudden he's in a world where two of his you know like two of the people with him are dead and now his life is is ruined by that and he's just like he's accepted that he hates it but he's accepted it it doesn't seem like that bud is fighting it like i and then it seems like there is potentially like a malicious bud Mm -hmm. because i did tell you that when like when one guy was pushed over the the ship and that bud went to that guy's door i did say it does seem like he doesn't know that that guy is dead Mm -hmm. and that he he genuinely doesn't know that and you said like that could just be like a really good ruse yeah a good alibi throw the, yeah, a yeah. good alibi to like throw the authorities off but it did feel genuine to me yeah well and also for the argument of bud bud who was talking to the denier of of bud the guy that he pushed off the ship he said to him like Don't blame me for everything that's happening. It's Henry's fault that did all this. But in this episode, Paul talked to him and was calling him Henry. And he was like, who? Like, he seemed very, like, unaware of of Henry. Right. When, in episode three, when Irina shows up to to Henry's place with the wine and, uh, and they're dancing... And Irina says that she has, you know, that, that, that she's dying. To me, I don't, I can't find any visual clue, cues. So maybe I'm, I'm just kind of like being a little whatever about this. But he calls her Irina towards the beginning. And then when she says that she's dying, he calls her Valia. Which that could just be like it's it's such that's such a an intimate moment that he's finally you know of, of hearing this bad news that he's finally using the name that she actually went by in the other world that she doesn't want people to use because like she doesn't want to come off as like cuckoo mm-hmm. and so that's a, a moment where he switches using names so I I could see it as like that moment of of finally saying what her name is but I also think that if you look at that conversation from start to finish i cannot see any visual cues to save my life but it it sounds like two conversations edited spliced together you know like there's two worlds where there's uh like two henry's and in one world there's an irena and in another world there's valia because Henry asks her the question of when are we going to do this again? And her response to it is weird. She like, it doesn't, it's kind of a non answer. And then they end up talking about like, why are you trying to cover this up? And she's like, it didn't happen. And he's, uh, and then, and then all of a sudden she answers a question and she says, I'm dying. It's not going to happen again. To me, it feels like two conversations, like one conversation of like, when are we going to do this again? We're not going to do this again. I'm dying is like. That is is cut there. That's one conversation. And then like inserted in the middle in potentially another world is this conversation about like, why? Why are you covering things up? You know, it. I don't know. It just. There are these weird inconsistencies. Here's another weird inconsistency. Twice we see... We see Paul when he's conducting the the experiment on the ISS. And he says, phase six. 
But then when the in episode one, when Henry wants the data collected, he asks for he's like, we have the phase four. Why? It, it, it feels like that doesn't quite make sense to me. Like, I could understand that maybe phase six wasn't captured because the accident happened, but phase five data should still be there. Mm -hmm. It's, there are just, there are still these weird little things that to me don't quite make sense with just two worlds. That's also fair because, and I have had a little similar thought with, we see in the first episode, Joe is talking to the Alice that has the braids, that knows Swedish, and it does seem like that's the Joe that does go look at the cow. And in this episode, so then I was thinking, wait, like, the cow doesn't exist in the universe with Alice at the braids. It only exists in the one. And then this episode, we see when they, they show the cow again and she's talking on the iPad again. It is the Alice with the ponytail in in this episode. But it did seem I and I ha, it's been a minute since I've watched okay. the first episode. OK, I, I, I rewatched that sequence. And uh -huh. it's interesting because they gave us so much information that we, we totally didn't catch. OK, that very first scene. Or it wasn't the first scene. The first scene was uh, uh, Joe driving Alice to the cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. But like that that scene of, of the accident in the ISS, that shows both worlds very clearly. Oh, it does. Go rewatch it 100%, at least, in, unless there's like more than two worlds. It 100% uh -huh. shows two worlds. So you will see uh, red and white checkered, or red and blue checkered uh, Alice with ponytails, speak Swedish, mom speaks Swedish. Uh, I think the Sweden patch is on, like the Sweden flag patch is on one side, I don't remember which. And when she's showing Joe the, the lettuce that they're growing, you can see Paul and you cannot see the cow. It is not in that shot, it's not in their world this is the world with Bud. Hmm. And then it seems like it's the very next like part of the scene. They're speaking in English and she's saying something fiddly is happening with the cow. And we do see the cow and we do see that Joe is wearing, uh, I think, like an all blue outfit and has, I think, like one ponytail instead of the braids. Alice. Alice, yeah. Uh, and I think the patch is on the other side of Joe. Okay. I don't remember which side. And then it goes, like, back to the one that says Mama, and you see, like, the patch switch again. So it, it's interesting because, like, Alice is on an iPad, so it's a small screen, so it's it's hard to see all these details. Yeah. You know, we, we've never met, like, we've barely met these characters. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's hard to take it all in. So, but like 100%, it is like the two scenes spliced together. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, well, it's tricky because I was wondering about that. I was like, this, <clears throat> this Joe definitely saw the cow before the accident happened. And then when I rewatched it, I was like, nope. Well, and then it, well, it also does make sense because remember when. Joe is stuck on the station by herself and the one person that she's talking to is like can you grab the cow can you grab the cow can you grab the cow and she was very dismissive about the cow like it wasn't important and that makes more sense of like why she doesn't realize that the cow's a thing right. because the cow didn't exist in her world right so I, I do think that there is at least like three of these if not maybe four okay um who knows okay so here's my biggest question and maybe you have a theory idea about how this worked okay so okay. we see 
both Joe and this is also what would make me think that there is a little bit more tricks up Constellation sleeve. Yes. We see Joe is in the space capsule. We see Paul's in the space capsule. They are yep. both experiencing the same thing of we cannot start we we're we need somebody on the other side to unlatch the pod, right? Right, yep. So the question would come then because it does imply that the other Joe, because we see that we left her on the space station, she's the one mm-hmm. that maybe let them out, but we know that that Joe's dead and the other Joe isn't inhabiting her. How did they get unlocked in that docking sequence? Right. I, and, and in, when, when the, Potentially, I think this might be like some wibbly wobbly stuff around like liminal space where you know all all states of reality can occur. So it's like you know because in in one reality or in one world, Joe is left on the ISS, and they can like use each other's consciousness or something. I don't know, like. Um, that Joe is able to, in this liminal space, unlock both doors, even though she definitely isn't in, like, there isn't a dead Joe in her world, or the world she ended up in, Mm -hmm. you know, where, where she has, like, Paul next to her. Because it wouldn't be Paul, because Paul, she did take, Joe did take Paul back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul left Joe. So the only person up there is, in one world, dead Joe, who sometimes breathes because they're in liminal space. And so, like, you know, both states can be true. She can be both alive and dead. Mm-hmm. And then because it's liminal space, I'd, like, that, this is where it gets kind of a little wibbly-wobbly. We'll, we'll kind of see about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, that's kind of my theory on that. Um, do you think Paul is dead at the end of this episode? Like the Paul that got shot by Bud? Yes. I would say I hope not, because I actually really did like Paul. I like Paul as a character. I think that, you know, yeah, we started off with Joe, we saw the inner workings of Joe a lot more, but Paul was a good juxtaposition of what Joe's going through. But I really did like Paul. Like, and I, I really felt for Paul. I, I like, I want Paul to succeed and, and, you know, poor Paul, you know, training with this person that he admires, he respects. Going, going back to like how you feel bad for him in this one compared to like Joe, where it's like, Oh, uh, you're this is weird. Yeah. Oh, you were maybe this is weird. Che- you were maybe cheating on your husband. Maybe right, I, I don't right. know how I feel about you, but like Paul had so much respect for Henry. He worked so close yeah. with Henry, and then he yeah. sees he sees Henry in front of him as Bud, and it's like like your reality is breaking. Like somebody you admire so much, and that is just this washed up bum. So, like, you feel for Paul, so I'm hoping he's alive after all of that. But I could see, you know, in this, like, these double universes and these characters alongside, like, a lot of people are dying that are surrounded by this, you know, switching positions. Yes, Paul died in the other one, so would Paul die in both of them? I don't think Paul is dead. I want to say I don't think he's dead. I I think he's I think he's not dead. I think the the name of the episode was potentially a very smart reference which because it is like a real world reference about once again conspiracy theories which is what this kind of show is about and about people changing bodies which is what this show is about. Like that's 
that's a super smart reference. Yeah. It can 100% be about that, but if you don't know about that, your assumption is, like, Paul, the character in this show, is dead because he gets shot at the end. Yeah. And and here's my theory on why, uh, why it looks like he's shot, but I don't think that, um... I don't think that that's who Bud shot at. Oh, you think he shot at someone else? There was a mirror prominently behind Paul. Very prominently behind Paul. And Bud did say, you tell me why the fuck you are here. What if he's talking to another Bud or another Henry that's in the mirror and it's like, what are you doing in my house? In my world? Okay. See, I didn't even see the mirror. I think that is a beautiful... I, I, I'm I, now subscribed to that, that theory. That Boom. Make sure to click the bell icon for notifications in order to get more on that theory subscription. I love that. That is... That's really clever. Because it... He did tell Paul to get out of his house. He said, uh, you know... But I could see that he has been battling with Henry through a mirror. And the mirror being behind Paul. I could Mm -hmm. see in a fit of rage, he doesn't shoot Paul. He shoots Henry in the mirror. He shoots the mirror. You know, like... Okay, yeah, I like that idea. I like that idea. But we will have to find out next week because that is our journey for today, folks. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Constellation Episode 6. Next week we will be doing Constellation Episode 7. So come back next Monday and join Sterling and I as we dive into that one. Thanks a lot. Thanks.